All right, what is up, guys? Welcome back to Fit Body Secrets. My mission is to bring you guys inspiration, motivation, and a ton of tips to help you guys on your fitness journey. And I forgot to say, my name is Coach Cheryl. <laughs> it is 12 o'clock on hump day. Bear with me. I normally do my podcast like beginning of the week or end of the week. Uh, and I just feel like I have five episodes that I want to record and I want to kind of get them out there quickly because they're all kind of progressing and building on one another. And so my first episode of this bonus series, I talked to you guys a lot about building the foundation of the base, which is going to be obviously making sure that your lifestyle is in check, that your goals are in check, nutrition's on point, and that you have really this, this desire to actually change the way you look at fitness, the way you look at training and all those types of things. And CrossFit is, is really a different type of training than a lot of people are used to. And, um, you know, as I was getting ready for the second episode, I started to think about, I want people to understand that CrossFit isn't the only training method that works. Any tra training method will likely work for as long as it's in line with actually what you want to achieve. But what's really cool about CrossFit is I know that a lot of people get into fitness for the sole goal of like, they want to change how they look. They want to improve their body composition or they want to improve their health. And the cool thing about CrossFit that always like really resonated with me was that our body became a side effect of our fitness. And it made the gym more exciting because I wasn't just going to the gym and like feeling the burn on the leg extension machine, you know, or like just, you know, burning calories in a hit class. Like it was actually giving me something that I left the gym feeling successful for. And, and that's really why I wanted to start this series, because I think that a lot of people that do join CrossFit and maybe don't have that understanding and that knowledge about what they are looking to achieve in their CrossFit classes, they might be feeling that way. They might get kind of bored. They're like, I'm just, you know, going in and doing these workouts. I'm never really understanding anything. And I want you guys to really understand what it is that you're doing when you're doing CrossFit. So episode one was all about laying the foundation. You got to have the nutrition in check. Training without the nutrition is not going to get you what you want, especially if aesthetics are your goal. Um, making sure that your lifestyle is in check, that you're really looking at what you value and, and that fitness should become a part of that, not this like short-term temporary thing. And with CrossFit, like I mentioned in my first episode, I've been doing this for over 13 years now. There's a lot of longevity built into this sport. And it's not the only thing, like I said, it's not the only way that works. Bodybuilders also have a very dedicated way of living their life. And they've been doing that for years and years and years and years and years. And, and there's a lot of similarities between these things. But today's episode, we're going to be adding on and we're going to be talking about building the aerobic base because the next step up uh, in the category of fitness uh, when you're building the hierarchy is going to be metabolic conditioning. And this is uh, not what people think it is. This is what most people think CrossFit is. Most people think CrossFit is going into the gym every day and literally pushing yourself as hard as possible to get this feeling of suck. And you're lying on the ground and you're like, what just hit me? And then you try and if you're doing it first thing in the morning, you're also trying to go work your day. And you're like, you can't even stop thinking about how tired you are. That is not the goal of CrossFit. CrossFit has has science behind it. And when we're talking about metabolic conditioning and we're talking about building the aerobic base and we're talking about the anaerobic base and all these things I'm going to go into today, I want you guys to understand that the goal is to build a well-rounded person, a person that is fit in more than just one domain. So as I mentioned, bodybuilding, right? It's okay to do bodybuilding as your, as your sole, you know, goal of, you know, your sole, uh, training methodology, right? But when you're only doing bodybuilding, you might not be getting the fitness. Maybe, you know, you're not getting the actual adaptations to cardiovascular fitness. Maybe you value that. Or maybe if you're only doing running or you're only a runner, you're getting really fit in that domain, but you're not getting the strength that you need to keep your body healthy long-term. So I, I'm actually going to be recording an episode on the importance of weight training for women, but that's to come. So um, today we're going to talk about building the engine, building the aerobic capacity, building the metabolic conditioning up, which is the meat of CrossFit. The majority of CrossFit is built in couplets and triplets, the 21, 15, nines, the, the five rounds for time. And those types of things, those are the things that people like when they open up the water, the sugar water, whatever it is, they're like, Oh, that's the work of the day. Awesome. And you're like, man, I'm going to crush this or, Oh shoot. That's my least favorite movement of the day. So we're going to go into that today. And I'm going to start by talking to you guys first about the understanding between the three different energy systems. And if y'all know me, you know, I'm sipping on my coffee right now. All right. So when most people think cardio, they think really, well, let me take that back. Most people think cardio or they think hit. Okay. When people think cardio, they're thinking of 60 minutes on the stair stepper, uh, you know, going on the stationary bike for 30 minutes. They're thinking about these long runs, marathon running. That's essentially what they look at as cardio. And then you've got your hit 
people and they're like just doing things as fast as possible. Interval training, you know, high intensity interval training and everything's got to be like super, super hard. Like I mentioned, they got to leave like feeling like they just, you know, died and they're like coming back to life afterwards. Like there's a lot of things people need to understand about building this base, right? So you've got your aerobic system and your aerobic system essentially means that you are utilizing oxygen. So there is a presence of oxygen here. And these are going to be your lower to moderate intensity uh, time do time domain. I'm sorry, lower to moderate intensity uh, efforts and a time domain that is usually greater than 20 minutes. So think of this like anything over a 5K run or a 20 minute AMRAP where it's really hard to push intensity for that long because you're going to burn out. So if I tell you, hey, we're going to go run three miles, you're not going to be sprinting the first 400 meters unless the first 400 meters counted as a separate score, correct? <laughs> so you you know that like you have to pace yourself here. This type of work is really, really, really important for a lot of CrossFit athletes, especially as they're building volume tolerance, because this type of training does help with some mitochondria, which means it's going to help your body recover a little faster. Um, having a stronger aerobic base also builds your endurance up. So if we're also simultaneously building up the other energy systems, it means you'll actually be able to last a little bit longer. So we want to make sure that we are building this aerobic base. A lot of people cherry pick longer workouts because they know they suck. Vice versa, you've got another school of people that only want to do long, grindy workouts. They don't, they don't get that feeling when they do a workout that took them three to five minutes. So it's really important to understand that you want a blend of everything. One to two times a week, you should be looking at a longer workout. And as I'm going into this, I'm not even going to just, I'm going I'm to put out there right now. If you're not keeping track of your workouts, you should be. Whatever me method you're using, you should be figuring out because you should be tracking what you're doing and seeing what's working and what's not. And if you can look back and you're looking at the last three weeks and you've never touched anything above 10 minutes, you likely should be adding in a little bit more of that training. You might see better changes in your physique and your fitness. So that's your aerobic system. And you can train aerobically in a number of different ways. Uh, obviously, run, bike, row is going to be the easiest way. Um, but there is also ways to build CrossFit Metcons where you're going for 20 to 40 minutes. A lot of the earlier hero workouts used to be a lot longer, grindier workouts. I remember my first time doing EVA, five rounds, 800 meter run, 30 kettlebell swings, 30 pull-ups. A really awesome, long, grindy workout. I can't wait to get back to full speed again and be able to do some of my old CrossFit Metcons. Just getting back to the glory days. Anyways, going on. Now we've got the anaerobic system, and this means that your energy is derived without oxygen. So these are going to be your harder efforts, the quote unquote, they make you think a little bit, they make you feel really uncomfortable. Um, and you've got your phosphagen or your phosphocreatine system. This is going to be your highest power output. These are your one rep max lifts, your 10 second sprints on the assault bike or a 100 meter sprint outside. It's those how, how fast can you get your muscles to recruit and get that strength built in? Okay. And then the other anaerobic system we have is our glycolytic or lactic acid system. Uh, by the way, on that phosphocreatine system, we're looking at those efforts lasting about 10 seconds or less. So these are really, really hard to repeat. So if I told you to do a one rep max back squat, you're going to do one rep really heavy, but the amount of energy it takes, you would have to really recover before hitting that same rep again, if you could even do it again. Glycolytic lactic acid, this is where the majority of our CrossFit Metcons are going to be programmed in because I'll go into why this matters most. Um, and these are going to be moderate intensity, um, anywhere from like two, three, up to like 12 to 15 minutes. So most of your CrossFit Metcons are going to fall into this range. Or if you're doing interval training, so a three to four minute workout with a followed by some rest, for five sets, this is going to be more of that like glycolytic. Now that can also at some point become more aerobic if you're decreasing the amount of rest you're getting in those, in those things. So that's kind of what I want to go over as I'm kind of segueing and why I'm talking about this is because I don't want you guys to get so hung up and like, oh my God, am I training enough aerobic or anaerobic or this? Or that? It doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, when we talk about muscle fiber recruitment and energy systems and all those types of things, uh, your body is going to recruit a little bit of everything uh, when it's usually you, when it's talking about energy utilization. So uh, maybe not so much in that phosphocreatine system, but in that glycolytic, you're going to have a little bit of the phosphagen, a little bit of the uh, aerobic system as well. So we're always, and that's, and that's why 
that glycolytic pathway, that lactic acid threshold is one of the best places for most people to train for the most transference into all areas. And if you think about it, think about it, it's moderate intensity, which means it's more sustainable, right? Um, it's getting you bang for your buck. So, and I think that a lot of people just don't really understand how to actually train that, that domain. Uh, a lot of times because with CrossFit, there's a, a lot of emphasis on the time, the scores, or we put pressure on ourselves in terms of, you know, what the people to the left and right of us are doing, or that we're going to be the last one finished, or that like we're going so much slower, or our bars lighter. We're not really focusing what we should be focus, focusing on, was, which is how do we feel? And I love uh, Chris Henshaw does a really good job of talking about the RPE, uh, rate of perceived exertion. And where a lot of people should be living in their CrossFit workouts is somewhere in this like five to eight RPE range, uh, because that's where you're going to get the most benefits and you're going to be able to feel the benefits and you're going to be able to learn your pacing and, and figure out how to push yourself harder. Or when you push yourself too hard, you know, like that's really, really, really important for you guys to understand. I think that most people focus so much on the leaderboard, on the score that they're missing this. And that's why their metabolic conditioning never really improves the way that it could. So what I want you to know is that most of your workouts are going to be a blend of all three of these um, energy systems, but there's usually going to be a primary driver. Now, 20 minute, I'm running a 5k. I'm probably going to have, you know, burning out a little bit of my phosphocreatine system, especially when I'm doing a couple of, maybe I'm trying to pick up my cadence at the end. I'm going to be tapping into lactic acid and glycolytic pathways, but I'm mostly going to be using that aerobic system. Okay. When it comes to CrossFit and getting the most out of your CrossFit classes, I think a lot of people also like to geek out about like the best programming and, and, you know, like, oh, so-and-so is following mayhem and so-and-so is following proven and they're doing the class workout and why are they doing this? And it, it's all these different things, right? When it comes down to it all, all the programming, if, as long as we're getting that blend of those energy systems, we're touching different time domains, we're touching different loading, we're touching different stimuluses, we're going to be building up a really good engine. But the most important thing is that the loading and the movements need to be sufficient for you to get the right stimulus. And this is where a lot of people go wrong, you know, so they're focusing so much on the RX and the board. I talked about this in the first, in the first episode too. You know, if, if Fran calls for a time domain of somewhere under five minutes and it's taking you 10 minutes to do a workout, you're twice the amount of time to do the workout as where you should be for that type of a workout. That means you are missing the intensity and the stimulus of that workout. So we want to make sure we're scaling the movements down with things that are going to allow you to push that intensity to get that engine work in. It doesn't mean you are weak. It doesn't mean you are scaling. It means you are actually improving you're, you're progressing in your fitness by finding the right mod modifications to allow you to train that energy system, that type of loading, you know, that's the, you want that workout for you to feel the same way as it's going to feel for somebody that's doing it. That's really, really fit. We want you to improve your fitness that way. Okay. So now when it comes to adding in, let's just say you've been training CrossFit for a long time. You are a seasoned CrossFitter. You hit the gym five to six times a week and, you know, you do your CrossFit workout, you, maybe they do some strength and accessory and you're like, I really want to build my engine. I really want to build up my aerobic capacity. I want to build up my metabolic conditioning. I'm tired of hating burpees. I'm tired of hating running, you know, whatever that looks like that you just feel like you suck at. Right. So what you want to figure out is, and we're going to talk about strength a little bit here, but we're going to talk about this aerobic base today. Um, and your metabolic conditioning. I guess I can talk a little about the strength component too and the skill component. But when it comes to the actual fitness base, okay, your best bet is, I believe, in using more machine based work to build your aerobic base rather than adding more CrossFit. Now, I'm not saying to replace your CrossFit workouts with engine work all the time. What I'm saying is a lot of people, myself included, when I first started CrossFit, is when you're trying to build an engine, you're instead of just working on the machines because it's boring, uh, you might do a Metcon in the morning and then do another Metcon in the afternoon and maybe you're doing two or three Metcons. That's also likely a way to end up burning out and get some overuse injuries. You know, there's only so many movement and and there's not, not there's a ton of movements, but there's only so many movement patterns, right? We can squat, we can press, we can hinge, we can carry. 
What am I missing? Squat, press, hinge, carry, pull. Okay. So we got five really foundational movement patterns we can do. There's a number of different ways we can train those things. But if we're doing power cleans on one day, we're pulling off the crown. If we're doing deadlifts the next day, we're pulling off the ground. You know, if we're doing handstand pushups one day, we're, we're now we're pressing overhead. If we're doing jerks the next day, we're pressing overhead. So we have to realize that we don't want to just overtrain the muscles because it's not going to allow us to adapt the strength that we need, right? The engine work though can be more joint friendly. And it allows you to train these different time domains, the, the sprinty stuff, the, the lactic acid, and then the aerobic base while minimizing the joint wear and tear and allowing you to build that fitness base without so much of that. So if that is you and you're like, I really want to get better at my conditioning, this might be what you need. Now on the vice, when it comes to metabolic conditioning, there's a whole nother area here that I want to cover that is not related to energy systems, um, but also looking at muscle endurance, stamina, and strength. And if you are somebody who has a very strong aerobic system and you don't tend to have the strength and you don't tend to have that muscular stamina that you burn out really quickly, you know, with a barbell, uh, vice versa, you might not be doing as much of the actual aerobic base building because you already have that strong stuff, but to get your metabolic conditioning up, you might need to be working on like lactic threshold with loading. So that might not look like doing once again, more CrossFit Metcons. Uh, let's just say you notice that your leg endurance is, is rough. Like when you do wall balls or you do thrusters, you might be doing more goblet squats, air squats, you know, things like that, higher rep stuff to really improve that muscular endurance. You're still going to be training those glycolytic and aerobic uh, lactic, you know, those different types of energy pathways, but now we're training them in, in where you're weaker at. And if it's simply a strength thing, you might need to be working on building your strength in order to get yourself better at those metabolic conditioning. However, those things should be worked on, out on, worked on independent of your main CrossFit Metcon. You don't want to be working strength in a Metcon unless that's the stimulus of the workout. So if the workout's like one power clean, three handstand pushups, uh, five high box jumps, that is a higher and it's a heavier power clean. Maybe that's meant to be a more strength focused workout. Um, that's a different story, but you should still be getting the same stimulus. If that's meant to be a 10 minute workout, we want to make sure that you're peaking loading that allows you to use like a, Hey, I'm looking for a really hard challenging, heavy rep. So when it comes to getting the most for the next part, right? We talked about building the foundation of nutrition, of lifestyle, of all that stuff. And if you missed that episode, I'll put it in the show notes. Part two is really understanding the importance of building your metabolic conditioning. Guys, if you just want to look good naked, if you're hitting, I'm sorry, if you're hitting your Metcons with the right intensity, with the right loading, you're getting the right stimulus in, you're doing enough in your training. As long as we're seeing a blend of those different energy systems, different time domains, you're getting the right stimulus in, you are going to get that body to look differently. Now, it does come after you've addressed the nutrition, right? The nutrition has to come too. You can't expect to change your body without changing the food. So we want to make sure the food is dialed in. We want to make sure we're building that Metcon up. And then in the next episode, we're going to be breaking down the next pillar of our fitness. And that is going to be progressing into gymnastics and body weight training. And what's really cool guys is as I'm going through these things, I want you to realize that there's going to be a lot of throughout your CrossFit journey. You're never just focusing on one thing. You know, you might have an emphasis on your aerobic capacity, but it doesn't mean that the other things aren't also coming up as well. You know, I don't want you to think that you can only be focusing on your aerobic base, that you shouldn't be focusing on skills because sometimes skills might be your limitation. So um, we are going to kind of go over all that stuff, but I want you guys to really understand from today's episode is that if you don't have the strength or you don't have the skill to do a workout as RX, that is okay. You want to find that movement pattern that allows you to get that right stimulus to get that same feeling from that workout. That's how you're going to get the most bang for your buck. That's how you're going to, AKA quote unquote, get the stimulus of like looking good naked. That's what you guys need. I'm going to hop over to the comments, see if there's any questions or anything like that. I don't see any, which is good. Um, but if you guys do have any questions that you want me to answer uh, regarding uh, CrossFit, like anything you have questions about, please honestly shoot me a DM or comment in the notes or in the uh, chat from the YouTube uh, video so I can kind of address them. 
Uh, I'm really excited to talk about gymnastics and body weight training because that's honestly my favorite part of CrossFit. I, I love the gymnastics stuff. I love the skills. Uh, I think it comes down to when I was a kid, I wanted to do, do gymnastics and I never got a chance to do that. So that's going to be my next episode. But until then, guys, have an awesome afternoon and I'll talk to you on the next episode.